All right, for singing purposes, we're at three, two, one. All right, welcome to game three between Nada and Mind. The map is Blue Storm, and I'm also commentating with Diggity. And just hey. real quick, the colors are Nada is red in the bottom left versus Mind as yellow in the top right. So sorry for cutting you off there, Diggity. Welcome. It's okay. Uh, I was just saying hi throughout the... Well, anyway, anyway uh, hey, thanks for doing this. Uh, it's awesome. This is what's going to be the second dual commentary with Cyreaver and myself. Exciting to be here. And if you guys missed Game 1, go check it out on Moltrap's account. Uh, game 2, we're going to put up... Well, obviously, it's where you're watching it right now. To recap kind of Game 2, basically, mine just dominated that from front to back. We'll see if Nada can come back into this. I've heard that this game in particular was very good, so I'm hoping it'll it'll that will uh, live up to it. Really, I'm going to be sad no matter who goes out here. I really like mine, but, uh, and Nada's like my favorite player period, especially uh, Terran, just because he's so gutsy and so ballsy, and it's just, uh, and I know it's going to be, we saw a lot of actually kind of the dual competitions lately, where players within teams have been knocking each other out. We saw, well, Bisu switch teams, but we had the entire light sea uh, Bisu thing in the, the invite tournament, and then also uh, light versus sea, I think it was in the round of 16. And here we have Nada versus Mine, so it's We May Fox versus We May Fox. Again, whoever wins is just going to be kind of sad uh, either way. But anyway, uh, hopefully this will turn out to be an exciting guy, uh, a game for you guys, uh, and, and definitely going to be fun to do this with Cyreaver. Yeah, I'm hoping out of this game is that we just see, see something a little bit different. I mean, usually in turn versus turn matchups, it just comes down to the long-term macro and to whoever can get enough expansions to get Battle Cruisers, kind of like what we saw in Game 2 and in, in a lot of Terran vs. Terran matchups. I kind of hope to see from Nada something different, something that you won't normally see on, on Blue Storm. Blue Storm is pretty much whoever can control the the high ground, especially the high ground of this map or the or the ridge area in the middle, can pretty much can attack from any point very, very quickly, especially with Vulture Bike. So I'm hoping Nada does something just a little bit different here because I've, I've seen a lot of his replays and he has a good mentality of of judging what another player is doing and just creating a totally off-the-wall strategy that you won't think is, will work, and then it, it he pull, manages to pull it off. And I'm hoping we can see something like that happening here. We can see that Mind isn't exactly scouting. It looks like he's just scouting for cheese, so maybe Mind is a little bit fearful of Nada actually cheesing him because his SCV isn't even going down to Nada's base. Actually, it looks like Nada, what he might be doing is putting out some hidden tech uh, in the background corner, he might be putting down a barracks and faking like he's going factory. We'll see. Uh, he's still holding that SCV out in the back corner. It's interesting. Uh, bringing up that second SCV to hit. Really, uh, so basically what this looks like inside the base, it looks like a normal build. But instead, yeah, the factory is, is outside the base. So uh, in, uh, <laughs> this is kind of, a, I think it's going to be a double fake out where mine's like, oh, no, oh, my goodness, he's going to be uh, cheesing me like someplace where I don't think he's cheesing me. Whereas mine, or it's not as base, uh, factory is actually uh, quite a ways inside his base. We'll see if uh, mine actually triggers on that or not. Uh, I think we saw something, I think it was like Nara versus Iris a very long time ago with the Blizzard invite did something similar this where he put a pylon just out in the field randomly and really threw uh, really threw him off. And what this is going to do is, as you can see, uh, Mind in the meantime, has, I think that's his SCV to the north, just starting to scout out now, just trying to figure out where that factory is. And that can really, really be distracting. First of all, that's keeping uh, additional information from being gathered inside Nada's base. I really like it when players do little things like this. It's fun. Uh, and, and we'll see if that actually ends up uh, paying off or not in the long run. Looks like he's going to uh, produce a vulture back there. Uh, and so, and we'll see if Nada's prepared for it. Looks like uh, it looks like he's going for a normal build. So he's going to wow. He's going to expand. Uh, and Mind is expanding. Sure. Not as red, just so you know. Oh, not as red. I take that back. I'll say so. Reverse everything I yeah. said earlier. I was confused for a little while. But I was like, well, I'll see where he's going with this. But no, ah, not is actually going for the two numbers there in the upper left hand corner. Well, I'm totally new. <laughs> Well, yeah, we so can see that Nada is going in for a two-fact kind of like an all-in strat, and Mind is still going for a normal standard play here. So this, if Nada pulls off this two-fact factory rush, he's not even building a, a machine shop. He's going looks like all-in vultures for right now, maybe. I don't see a machine shop just yet, so this could be turned out very well for Nada if he can get up more forces, more vulture bikes than Mine, and he can rush in and do some really serious damage to Mine's economy. Yeah, I think this is the worst possible situation for Mind, really, because, you know, he's kind of hoping that, oh, Nada will be more confused, but in instead what uh, what Nada has done is he's going to force this into a kind of a vulture fight, uh, getting an armory down as well, so maybe I take that back. Maybe thinking about going to Goliath immediately uh, post this. Interesting. Maybe uh, he'll get kind plus of... an upgrade for his vulture bikes. 
I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, but yeah, he would be way ahead in that regard if he just decides to dedicate vultures and gets level one weapons out fairly quickly. Let's see if he's uh, uh But really, he needs to get uh, to kind of compete at this. Uh, has now found that factory. He needs to get uh, level one weapons as well. Scouting that secondary. So now he's yeah he's going to go into a full court press here, uh, and he can get two more factories down if he's just producing vultures here. Uh, but yeah, that single tank out though is going to be the difference until mines uh, until mines mines. Uh, or I should say, not as mines come out here. And Nada actually got the the Goliath there, and he's also going for a starport. So you think he might go for quick vulture bike drops here, or Goliath drops? Because he's already got Goliaths out. He's already getting a starport up, and he's expanding. So he's kind of hoping that with that two vulture bike rush, he's kind of put mine in the defensive mindset just for now. So he, I guess, so he can. And another star port, two star ports. So, so he's going a wraith rush. I guess he's going to go like kind of a wraith goliath. He's produced those two goliaths. I'm not quite sure why. I think he, maybe he was expecting without seeing that factory that uh, he was in fact going to be facing some sort of wraith cheese. Maybe that's why he produced the two goliaths. But in the meantime, yeah, he's just going to kind of camp at that secondary with the two goliaths. Uh, I guess to fend off the tanks and just hope that Seedshake doesn't come up in the meantime, then use the Wraith to take out the tanks. But yeah, in the meantime, he's going a two Wraith build, a uh, double Starport Wraith Goliath build. This is interesting. Three tanks coming down in the meantime, as, as well as a Vulture uh, for Mine. So if Mine pushes this attack right now or just starts flooding tanks, I think he'll take a big advantage. This is a crazy game. It looks like he's going Starport as well. I don't know if we saw a second Starport earlier, also getting his armory down. Uh, so interesting from Nada. Uh, Mine taking a little bit of an advantage, having his secondary out a little bit faster. Yeah, those three tanks now pushing at the secondary. Uh, as soon as he has Siege tank upgrade. I think my, uh, Nod is going to be in a little bit of trouble because that secondary is going to be very vulnerable because uh, Wraiths just don't do a lot of damage very quickly, and it's just going to be, yeah, yeah, it's going to set up for that uh, push right here, and I just don't know that he's going to be able to fight it off because, uh, yeah, uh, he was only got a single tank. It's not Siege upgraded. He's only got two Goliaths otherwise. He's got that, that Vulture blocking, and it's going to be a minute before even those two Wraiths come out to kind of fight this off. Ooh, big, uh, so this is going to be really costly for Nod, and now that single Wraith coming out is just going to have to pick it away. Yeah, you gotta love uh, Wraith burst laser damage. And he's actually gonna chase Mind away. Mind is actually picking up his siege tanks and he's moving them back. He's actually retreating away from those Wraiths, which I think is kind of a, a, a mistake. I mean, the Wraiths aren't gonna be doing that much damage that quickly. I think he could actually move those two siege tanks forward and still harass the expansion. So I don't think that's a good idea. And he's still getting harassed by that Wraith. He's just leaving them there to get picked off. So I think Mind is, I think he's either really confused or he's busy doing something else because he's not playing, he's not playing that very well, leaving those siege tanks back to get picked off by the Wraith. Now I'm going to bring two more tanks in the, the forward position and bring some Goliaths down in the meantime. Uh, so these Wraiths in a bit of trouble. Three Wraiths being produced, so Nada going all in Wraith at this point. We'll see if it pays off for him. Really, I don't think, like, uh, he's kind of forced to fight off these tanks, but that uh, obviously is not going to win him the game in the meantime. Uh, his secondary getting harassed. Looks like he's upgrading Cloak in the meantime. The Goliath's already up, so he's going to have to pull back. Just trying to fight that barracks back. If he can get that barracks down, that could definitely be huge, because he can at least uh, stop some of that factory production. But right now, my, keep in mind, mine's ba and losing his own barracks, so never mind. Uh, Academy going down as well, so he's probably going to be well, uh, well prepared for the cloaking here in a minute. And just trying to, uh, he's going to have to, yeah, he's going to have to spend the cloaking just to fight this off here. So mine in a very strong position here. Uh, it feels like this is going to be 3-0, uh, unfortunately. And it looks like yeah, dropship being produced in the meantime. So yeah, things really going well for mine all the way across the board here. Yeah, right Always now mine just uh, on the defensive only because I don't think he he has no detection, he has no turrets or comsat, so he's just pretty much under defensive because he can't fight off those rates. He has no way to detect them, but he'll probably start getting turrets up here very quickly, not to mention with two command centers. He'll have two commsats right away to help <laughs> scan, scan off those rates. And we can see uh, Nada going in for the mineral line here. One interesting thing here is, is because Mine put those factories out at an awkward position, he's going to have to build turrets at three locations instead of just two. Uh, he's gonna those turrets getting picked off. It's gonna be very difficult. This might actually be the difference in the game. I don't know. Uh, but as you can see, mine has to put turrets all over his freaking base, and additionally, like out towards his uh, that third expansion because of these wraiths uh, pushing all the way around. Looks like they just ran out of energy. Uh, so right now, yeah, he really has to get on the defensive. Looks like he had a dropship alongside. I think he's just gonna do that uh, short drop. Yeah, gonna do a short drop off that six o'clock location. Uh, load up and just kind of unload and then uh, just ferry them down. And so we'll see if Nada can contend with this. I don't know that he has enough forces to really deal with it. He only has those four rates uh, and a couple tanks. It looks like going towards the north, unfortunately. It's also interesting to know, I wish they'd show us Mind Space real quick. Does Mind even have CompSat? He does have CompSat. So if Nada brings those rates down to help fend off this attack, Mind is going to have two CompSats ready for those rates. And hopefully, 
I'm sure he's hoping that'll be enough to take out those race forces, but Nada, as we know, he's really good with Micro, and he'll be able to hopefully trick mine into wasting his commsats, and then he'll bring his wraiths in to to help deal with the, that threat. Yeah, you can see Nada just making mine waste a commsat there. Oof, yeah, commsat, uh, the two commsat helps, but yeah, and it's starting to pick off tanks right here with those Goliaths out of position. But even so, I feel like mine is really taking the advantage. His secondary has not been harassed uh, at all, and, and it looks like, wow, Nada, where did those tanks come from? Oh. Uh, producing a lot of tanks out of nowhere. Uh, so incredible macro, and along with the race, it looks like he switched into a tank build, but it looks like more going to go down on the secondary. Reminder to drop the uh, mineral line here. Ugh, and uh, losing that dropship, though, so uh, le so not a managing to cling in this, pulling tanks out of nowhere, and considering his secondary has been harassed, he went a uh, two, uh, two starport wraith build. Where did he get these tanks from? Absolutely nowhere. Uh, amazing, my, uh, amazing macro uh, by Nada in the meantime, I really feel. Yeah, unfortunately, he... he only doesn't he only has I think just barely getting the machine shop upgrade for just the third factory. I think mine has four factories, maybe a fifth. Yeah, he had four, four out in the corner. So there. mine is going to be able to out macro, but of course mine is having to spend a lot of money on Goliaths, which costs you know a significant amount of gas if you want to get enough of them to deal with the wraith threat like a, a wraith threat like that. So he's having to spend gas not only on anti air but also anti ground, and that's going to cost him a lot of gas. <clears throat> but yeah, it looks like uh, Nada really on the advantage here. He's just pressing forward. Compsat went off, ended up losing two of those wraiths. Let's see, uh, it still still has two up, and it looks like the, another Compsat going off, so probably going to lose his wraith force here. But pushing up, uh, pushing right into Mine's forces, has SEVs, and it looks like he's going to go all in right here. Uh, he's just going to force up and try to put, uh, basically do that counterattack on the secondary. Uh, interesting, and it looks like Mine in the meantime going to expand to the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, Nada in the meantime expanding at that mineral only expansion, uh, and, and, and yeah, <laughs> that uh, eBay in the that uh, engineering bay in the meantime getting eBay, hey, uh, getting shot down in the meantime. But it looks like mine is setting up for another drop. And not too much going on right now. We can see actually not taking two expansions, like you mentioned, the mineral only, but also the top left. So he's going to have one base up on not on mine if he can prevent mine from harassing him a little bit longer and prevent him from finding those expansions. We can see that mine coming in now with the dropship going for more harassment here with his with four Goliaths, no, three Goliaths, taking out four, oh, there's a fourth one, taking out some of those SCVs and those sea shanks coming in, cleaning up those Goliaths and some wraiths also chasing off the dropship there. But, uh, yeah, I managed to take the dropship down. That was a big boon, but it ended up costing him, what was that, about six or seven SCVs as well. Uh, but right now it looks like uh, Nada has that large force. I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, kind of in the middle of the map, you can see moving around. Mind in the, or, I'm sorry, Nada in the meantime has that seal uh, about at that 12 o'clock location of those tanks. Uh, but really, I, I kind of worry about the about things for Nada at this point, simply because if he can, he's a little spread thin. I mean, if it looks like Mind is scouting out that upper left-hand corner expansion right now. Uh, and I'm not sure that Nod is going to be able to defend it, uh, and, and we'll see in the long term if he's able to. SCV's coming off the line to, to break this uh, ridge wall. That's uh, incredible. From I guess he wanted to make sure he can have that open attack. Doesn't want to fall behind too far economically. It's amazing. I really, maybe they see something uh, we don't, but I didn't think it was that desperate that he needed to pull the SCVs off the line at this point. Uh, but, yeah, mine completely busting that up after taking some SCVs off the line. This is going to open up that attack. Uh, to that upper left-hand corner, should mine decide to, to kind of ferry some troops off, uh, trying to get, it looks like he lost that barracks, so getting that barracks back down so he can try to produce some more factories here in the meantime. So uh, I'm surprised he's not just getting run over, considering he's only got two factories where mine has four. Well, Nod has been doing an excellent job in macroing sea chinks. We just saw he got some reinforcements just a, lot, a little while ago, and that helped push off mine's attack. And you see that mine is taking the 6 o'clock position there. You can see the command center being built down there. But Nada, even though he lost a couple SCVs in that raid a little while ago on his on his secondary, he's got four command centers now that will be pumping SCVs nonstop. He'll be able to replace those losses very quickly, and he'll get his economy jump-started here because he has two expansions up. And mine, I think, might get a little bit behind here because right now he only has two bases compared to Nada's... Wait, he has... Three. One, two, three bases. Sorry, to Nada's four. Uh, looks like he's spanning at the six o'clock location as well, being really ballsy here, which is right outside, uh, right outside mine space. Looks like he's building another barracks out in the field. I'm going to assume so he can scout out and break this kind of shell. Uh, basically what's happening here is uh, just kind of divvying up the map. Mine wants to make sure that he can secure the 6 o'clock and try to hold that 12 o'clock location. Looks like some SCV, yeah, going to try to drop at that 12 o'clock location so he can hold it, I think. In addition, actually, I think that might have been headed uh, to that uh, expansion in the upper left-hand corner. Losing that dropship, though, so those Goliaths are stranded there. Those tanks going to be able to kill it off here. So right now, it looks like things are divvying up not a somewhat ahead because he got those expansions down earlier, but mine in the meantime being really ballsy and taking uh, that 6 o'clock uh, looks like Nada really, I think Nada's going to try to secure that ridge at the 12 o'clock 
out before he really tries to expand there. Uh, an academy, another academy, and another army down. So thinking about more of a long-term, now switching into more of a long-term macro game. And really, I, I worry about the 6 o'clock location because uh, just a single dropship or a couple wraiths even uh, running pie that turret, and they could do a lot of damage there. We can see just... Yeah, the hiccup. Minutes, yeah. So it's going uh, again now. Okay. So, so what was I saying? Oh, on Blue Storm, what happens in a lot of Terran versus Terran matchups is you get one Terran takes his half of the map, the other Terran takes his half of the map, and then there's just a face-off in the middle of neither player really wanting to commit his forces to an attack because of the defensive high ground that the other player has. So I'm wondering if we might see battle cruises again in this matchup. It's definitely headed that direction. The way they're setting up, as soon as I, I feel like, as soon as they get, well, I think mind as soon as he uh, feels like he secured the six o'clock location, he might think about the shift. Uh, not a taking the twelve o'clock location, and I wouldn't be surprised if he thinks about the shift fairly quickly here. Uh, a lot of siege tanks around the corner. Really, it it, uh, it depends on having kind of a, a comfortable defensive perimeter and other things like that. Uh, honestly, I'm not. I, I don't get into a lot of long-term Terran versus Terran games, so I don't know when the uh, proper time. Maybe you can say that because have you done a lot of Terran versus Terran side where you can say when the proper time is to shift over to battle cruisers? The proper time to shift over the battle cruisers is when you can't get anywhere. If you just if you realize that he's entrenched, if your Terran opponent is entrenched, and there's no way you can break his blockade without sacrificing a ton of troops, you have to switch to BCs. Um, I I like seeing. Nukes. I think that's a lot more funner seeing nukes. But battle cruisers is the better <laughs> way to go because you can get the Yamato. And actually, we can see a dropship. Dropships coming in. Well, I don't know where they're going with that, but there's dropships coming in for mine down there at the six o'clock, and they're going to be taking that high ground, trying to push Nada away from that six o'clock area because it looks like Nada was trying to do a, a reverse turbo cliff and siege from the low ground. But mine came in with those dropships and helped repel that. But uh, yeah, as I was saying, when you can't break through in a Terran's opposing Terran's line. You gotta do something that's gonna switch it up, and battle cruisers is usually the the easiest way to do that because of Yamato. It's it's energy, so you can just recollect it without costing you any kind of money. So it's a better long term thing. But I think nukes are a lot more fun to play with. <laughs> Going the, yeah. Anyway, that's usually never mind. Uh, I won't get into that line of thought. Let's continue commentating the game. Uh, six o'clock location, huge battle happening over there, and I really feel like mine is taking advantage. She's fairly well entrenched, as you can see right across the middle. Uh, you have, and so now I'm expecting the shift. After this major drop from mine, I'm expecting to see one player shift or the other. Because uh, what I was about to say is usually you see the shift when you see the battle lines drawn, like you were saying. Uh, but as far as ex exactly the moment when you do it, like when you decide, uh, wow, huge drop coming off 12 o'clock location, tanks just shelling this. I don't think Nada has anything to defend this. He's going to end up losing all those SCVs. He's got those three wraiths. Uh, and a commsat will easily be able to take care of theirs. I think he might end up losing his command center as well. A couple tanks uh, coming to defend the... He might be able to get that command center out. Uh, yeah, is going to be able to defend that command center. But yeah, in the meantime, so it looks like mine actually taking advantage here. He's stopped production at the 12 o'clock. He holds the 6 o'clock. Uh, he hasn't started mineral uh, mineral excavation. Now we're seeing Nada uh, shift towards the battle cruiser. Let's see. I don't even see where his, his science facility is in the meantime. Uh, I'm just going to assume that he has it up somewhere out in the field. Uh, armories, two armories to the north, and there it is, the science facility physics lab. Uh, kind of off-center, so where it, where it couldn't be scanned off, but the, my guess is those those starports are easily going to be scanned off uh, by Nada. We'll see how quickly he gets that scan and decides to shift. <clears throat> but again, uh, I feel like Nada's in a bit of trouble because he's, uh, he's a bit behind as far as gas production goes again. And Mind, uh, although I think he's he's quite a bit ahead because I don't see Mind shifting into the battle cruisers, and really you want to be doing it about simultaneously or you want to have a major economic advantage where you can have one or two more starports where you can produce more battle cruisers at that point. Uh, looks like Mind in the meantime still can this is what I, this is more the point I was trying to get at is I feel like if you delay too long at shifting to battle cruisers you end up falling behind uh, but there's definitely times where you're vulnerable while you're shifting to battle cruisers to massive drops like this if mine decides to drop in that upper left hand corner yeah right now I think not a He's switching the battle cruisers. He's just content to let, uh, and actually we can see mine just doing, uh, breaking through in those dropships. He's heading right for the top left expansion, and Mata has no defense up there. Not only is mine going to be able to do a lot of damage to that top left expansion, he's going to see that science facility, and he's going to know that battle cruisers are going to be coming soon. 
So this is exactly what I was talking about is, is I worry about like the, during that transition period, and this is really what it was more the core of the problem I was trying to get at, is during that transition period, I feel like this sort of thing, you're extremely vulnerable to this sort of uh, attack. And this comps that out, seeing those two armories, that's definitely going to key in for mind that, oh, wait, I need to start shifting towards uh, battle cruisers, or I need to step up uh, the dropship attack so I can keep inflicting damage. He's not going to be able to do that because losing a ton of dropships there. He went in with six and is only getting two back. Ouch. Uh, and it looks like the, that single Wraith is going to be taken out in the meantime, but got all but one dropship. So mind is, and I really feel like that shifts a lot to Nada's favor, because he's going to have three battle cruisers before mind is even starting to uh, starting production on them. Uh, so really losing all those dropships, I think this is, is uh, this is a big boon for Nada, even though he lost a lot of SUVs in that upper left-hand corner. And we can see that Mind still hasn't taken his mineral only. I guess maybe he thinks he doesn't need the minerals yet, but I really think he should get that mineral going, that mineral only going here pretty soon because he's only down to just three mining bases and Nada still has, he has three as well, but he has, he's gonna try to retake that 12 o'clock. And we see that Mind's actually taking the middle. Yeah, going for a suicide push up the middle, realizing that, yeah, there's a shift to battle cruiser, so I need to do something now, and because they don't have the dropships, I need to push up and with what I have and try to break these lines, try to stop one of the expansions, either at the 12 o'clock, well, he's already stopped the 12 o'clock, or take out that uh, upper left hand. Might lose, might take down a battle cruiser right there. That would be absolutely devastating for Nod. It doesn't look like he managed to do so. Uh, but yeah, now he's just gonna, it looks like he's trying to redraw the battle lines and try to, and more tanks being produced by Nada though in the meantime. So it looks like Nada, I think he's gonna be able to fight this off. Looks like he's yeah, just pushing up the mine, has three dropships in the meantime, he's just gonna have to go with what he has, uh, at the moment. As you can see, it looks like he's completely mined out of the main, uh, as little low in the secondary. Going for another drop in that upper left hand corner, and it doesn't look like Nada, once again, Nada has nothing to fight this off but SCVs. So gonna end up losing a lot more SCVs. So mine, uh, very, uh, very astutely realizing the situation, ah, uh, this is just, oh, this is really gonna hurt Nada. A lot here. Yeah, this isn't good for Nada at all. You can see that Nada is, now he's trying to run his SUVs to the 12 o'clock position, which I don't think he's retaken. There's still siege tanks up there, so he's just kind of confused as to where he sends SUVs and looks like they're just going to sit there and get killed, unfortunately. Meanwhile, we can see a huge big yellow blob in the middle of the map. You see that? Are those SUVs or yeah. are those mines forces? I think those are tanks, and I think what mine's doing is he's like, I'm not going to let you transition to battle cruisers. I'm not going to let you kind of get that advantage. I'm going to push straight into your main. I'm going to take this game right here. Is kind of what, and those two armories down, which is huge, because that's upgrades for the battle cruisers as well. Uh, and and with those two armories down, basically those battle cruisers are going to be less effective than they would have been otherwise. Uh, and not in the meantime having to bring more forces across from the middle. So not knowing that those battle cruisers are having to deal, it's going to push up at that 12 o'clock location. You can see that blob going across. I'm surprised they're not there. They're focusing on it. Uh, the 12 o'clock location now being breached. So mine in really firm control here, in my opinion. I agree with mine. He's still he's deciding he's not going to transition to battle cruisers. He's deciding he's just going to keep with the land force and keep up with the dropship production and just try to force Nada from massing up those battle cruisers. He's going to try to force those battle cruisers to roam around the map defending expansions instead of doing what they need to be doing is pushing into his production facilities into attacking. He's going to prevent Nada from attacking his own expansions. So I think Mine is doing yeah. the correct thing here. He realized he's too far behind switching to the Battle Cruiser tech. So now he's trying to just keep Nada busy so he can mass up a big enough round. I mean, this is a little bit foolish here. He almost almost lost all those dropships to those Battle Cruisers, but it looks like Nada is forced to flee here because of the oncoming Goliath force. I should pick off the Battle Cruiser there. It looked like there was a decent sized Battle Cruiser force up for Nada. He had the four out, and they were just kind of ravaging. Uh, mines lines and yeah he really needs to get two or three more out he does have three it looks like they're level one upgraded across the board uh, so at least he got some upgrades off uh, before losing those two marches to the north looks like he's going to try to recap that 12 o'clock location now I feel like uh, I'm surprised that uh, that attack wasn't more effective for mine I'm surprised mine's really bothering I uh, really just stick the Goliaths on the battle cruisers but otherwise start attacking the production uh, stop worrying about like the, the defensive lines you don't really care about the defensive lines anymore you're just trying to pick off battle cruisers and trying to end it quickly now uh, trying to get some turrets across the middle as you can see bringing up some SCVs uh, for the attack. Let's see if he decides to go for the, the main production here. Uh, and a couple, yeah, SCV's uh, starting to gather up to the north. Uh, going to build some turrets there, and I guess he's just going to try to push. That's really the location he needs to go right there uh, and, and take out those three. And it doesn't look like any more battle cruisers are being produced, actually, at the moment. So Nada having to worry about getting it. Yeah, it looks like his mains mined out. His secondary's probably mined out as well. He needs to worry about taking that 12 o'clock location. So actually, Nada has two options. He can go after the production, or he can go after that 12 o'clock location. That's really where I feel like the key uh, crux of the game is going to be around at this moment. But those battle cruisers kind of roaming 
circling around that twelve o'clock location. I feel like you would be better off just going for straight. Yeah, he is in fact going straight for that uh, for the Starport uh, production. Mine just playing brilliantly here. Uh, gonna go. Actually, it looks like he's just gonna go after the factory production. So there's nothing to supplement those forces uh, and dropping here, and just gonna go after the supply otherwise, because that can also be uh, devastating. So basically, a lot of options for mine. Mine doing a very good job of dropping all over Mana's forces and forcing Nada to be in transition all over the place. And uh, yeah, I really feel like this is firmly in mine's control. I'm going to have to agree with you. Mines forces right now, they have the plus two weapon upgrade, so those Goliaths are actually able to damage those battle cruisers a lot. They only have just the plus one armor, but those Goliaths can do a ton of damage to those battle cruisers. You can see the mine trying to do some Goliath down. dancing here, trying to kill the battle cruiser, and he was successful in doing that. But in the meantime, I guess the question is, is now kind of long-term economics as well, is his mind can keep pushing his forces off. Uh, but he's losing, as far as each drop per each drop is, his mind is uh, not as fighting these off, uh, but he's doing so at a higher, I would say, economic cost. Now a uh, counter drop coming at the 12 o'clock. Mine just uh, all over the place brilliantly. So as soon as he dropped near that production line, uh, drew those battle cruisers back because just heavy units in single locations immediately going to go back to the 12 o'clock and uh, deny the gas in this command center once again. Uh, let's see if Nada can push this off with these tanks that are coming up in the meantime. Uh, I'm not sure that he's going to be successful because I think there's going to be another troop of dropships loading up and more forces. Yeah, uh, they come right back in. So mine doing everything right here, really showing why he is the MSL champion. I agree. If Nada loses this 12 o'clock, which it looks like it's going to be happening. Nope, here comes some battle cruisers on the scene, but there's still a large handful of Goliaths there, and they're going to chase those battle cruisers off. If Nada loses this command center, which he's trying not to do, and he's lifting out that command center, but he's going to get taken oh. off by those Goliaths, and those SVs tried to come in there and repair at the last second, but they were unable to do so. So now Nada really far behind here. He's down to pretty much his top left base. His mineral only is probably almost mined out. Mine still ha just expanded to his mineral only, so he still has fresh minerals coming in, so he's able to not only that he's still got the bottom right and the six o'clock. He's gonna be able to he's gonna be able to keep up this troop production. Another battle cruiser goes down for Nada. This is not looking good for Nada at all. This is this just looks really tough for Nada to come back from. He's gonna need some sort of maybe he's upgraded Yamato at this point. Maybe he can get some uh, miracle attack off, but really I just don't see it happening. Uh, trying to rebuild at that 12 o'clock location really needs to rebuild at a 12 o'clock location. But in the meantime, while the mouse is away, the uh, cat will play. As you can see, just going to push up the middle and uh, and try to do some attacks here across the middle. Going to flank it, looks like those tanks up uh, from that 12 o'clock location. We'll see if he decides to do a counter drop uh, somewhere deeper in Nada's base in the meantime as well. I think that would be the smart thing to do again, is to drop Nada's main. If he can take out Nada's factories and stop his production there, I think that would help him w seal the game right here now because we all know that mine went in there and there was no form of defense at all against the drop. So in the meantime, Nada hasn't put up any defense there at all and mine can easily comp at the area realize that Nada is still vulnerable to a drop inside of his base. And last, I think that's what he's doing here. You can see him loading up a lot of ships and those drop ships are now moving out. Yeah, the, let's keep in mind the other factor is the fact that Mind, even though in these attacks he's been very effective, he's really bleeding troops uh, additionally, and he needs to worry a little bit about economics because it looks like Mind is mining. I mean, he has three potential bases he's mining. He's got the mineral only, he's got the uh, 12 o'clock, and he's got the upper left-hand corner as well. Uh, mine, in the meantime, as you can see, he's mined out his natural, he's mined out his main. He, the bottom right-hand corner is starting to get thin. The 6 o'clock, I'm going to assume, is thin at this point. And the mineral only looks like it's been mined for quite a bit now. Uh, we missed it, so uh, he's got to be worrying about because basically between dropships, Goliath, tanks are very expensive uh, unit costs and it look and because he's been pressing on nada uh, has been on the offensive it's really been a big kind of unit cost in my opinion uh, so nada might end up pulling the game that way though uh, I severely doubt it uh, we'll see as you can see another battle cruiser going down and again that uh, 12 o'clock position getting stomped out uh, another command center going down so the, oh, another uh, canceling it though fortunately uh, I'm now going to push up and try to use that command center to spot I'm not sure where that command center was built maybe in the background not a uh, built addition. two by accident Accident. I saw him build <laughs> one outside the wall, and then he started building one inside the mirror only. I wasn't sure if he had a purpose for that, but I think it was just he was busy, and he didn't remember if he had built one or not, yeah. so I think he just built two to be safe. So things really come, coming down to it. It looks like, it, yeah, SCV is coming off the line at the moment. Another dr large drop pushing up. Uh, so Nada, maybe if he can hold on a little longer with kind of the, the, the defensive he's got, uh, maybe he can win this game just economically, the fact that uh, he, he's really absorbing these attacks, not uh, fantastically, but quite well. Uh, so maybe that'll shift it. We'll see.
but really I still feel like mine's in a lot of control. It looks like mine is setting up for another attack across the middle uh, and still only has that one battle cruiser. He's been basically stymied until he can get kind of gas production here. Uh, <laughs> is, is pushing this up and he's going to try to use the... And doesn't have anything attacking in the meantime. I'm not sure why he's just allowing his command center to be attacked like that. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, it looks like Nod is... Really, I feel like Nod has got all his forces committed at the 12 o'clock location across the middle and he doesn't have anything defending anywhere else. I'm surprised Mind hasn't exploited that yet. And we can see that Nada is also bleeding dry as well. So he, both players are just desperate for minerals. Nada wants a 12. Mine wants a 12. Both players realize the significance of 12 since it's the only untapped location so far in the game. And we can see that mine is getting prepared here for a huge offensive against, against Nada. But you, where did all those tanks come from? I didn't even realize all those tanks are on the high ground right there. Holy crap. Yeah. Nada's a lot more than I thought. That's the only thing I think Nod has been pumping in, uh, in the meantime. He's stopped with the battle cruiser production. He's only got that single battle cruiser. I guess realizing that economically he really couldn't sustain it uh, long term with just the two bases, uh, decided to switch to mass tank, and that's been effective. Now a huge drop coming across the main, though. Uh, but really, aside from the supply, I'm not sure what a lot of damage he can do with the main, aside from getting those factories down. Well, I guess there's a lot he can do here. He can get the supply, he can get the factories. Pushing up on those factories now, uh, yeah, and this is going to force Nada to bring all those troops back. So Are we going to have a hiccup in five there. seconds? Okay, bad timing. Okay. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that as well. Um, anyway, but yeah, it's, it's sorry with the recording there, guys. Um, kind of hiccups back and forth, and we get the kind of drug, but bad timing for it too, because as you can see, looks like Nada's going to be able. Where did he get these troops from? How did he ferry them back so quickly? Uh, going to be able to fight that attack off. Unbelievable defense from Nada. Uh, I really thought that was basically he was going to lose at least a factory there, but only ended up losing a machine shop, basically. Another drop coming in, though, in the meantime, but not as units are there. Let's see if that opens up that 12 o'clock location for drop. I still think there – it looks like there's still some tanks gathered up there. Uh, but, yeah, going to lose uh, – even even losing that depleted Vespin gas. Yamato! Oh, Yamato taking out a tank there. Uh, but yeah, this is well, this is an incredible battle. Nada just on the defensive everywhere, mine pushing in attacks where he can push them in, and both players getting dangerously close to zero minerals here. It looks like that gas out in the meantime. We can see that Nada has successfully taken the twelve o'clock position. Mine had to commit a lot of his tank forces from the middle and from the top part of the of the map to twelve o'clock to hit Nada's main base, and we can see that he's just stretched thin. He has nothing left, so Nada was able to successfully retake his twelve o'clock position. And we can see that there's SCVs up there mining now. Things just don't look good for Mine. He's completely mined out at his six o'clock. His bottom right is almost gone. He's down to his mineral only, which means he's going to only be able to produce vultures here in a, in a little while. This is unbelievable. I cannot believe that Nada has somehow managed to survive uh, this long. Looks like he's had a lot of. I mean, he's. He, it's like the battered ship that's just somehow surviving, losing that depleted Vespin gas once again to that tank force to the south. But yeah, it looks like Mind is essentially mined out. Uh, mind is mined out. At the 6 o'clock location, he's completely out of minerals. He's only basically mining uh, minerals out of his uh, mineral-only expansion. And Nada, in the meantime, has that 12 o'clock location, has that upper uh, left-hand expansion. And because he's mining essentially later, uh, it's basically working out for him. He's got, he's, uh, and again, because of that uh, differential unit cost, the fact that Mind has been going into Nada and therefore u losing more units uh, and higher cost in units as a result. Uh, crazy, 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 crazy game. Yeah, honestly though, I mind needs to secure an expansion. He's spending a lot of forces trying to take out Nada's base, but Nada obviously, if he, if he keeps being allowed to mine, he can just replace those factories. He can replace those supply depots. Mine can't replace his forces. He does not have the resources to replace those forces that he is casting into the dragon's mouth, pretty much. I mean, you can see Nada has a huge defensive line set up to prevent mine from pushing in any further into Nada's base. I just feel, and here's what I was talking about. Here's, here's the vulture bikes. All he has left is minerals. He's got to make vulture bikes now. It's kind of. Wow. All he's got is those vultures, so I guess he's going to make a run at that 12 o'clock location with those SCVs leading uh, to take the, the absorbed tank hits. And yeah, here it comes. Got to go for the 12 o'clock. I think that's really his only option. Lead the SCVs in to absorb the tank hits, put in the vultures along the side, and this is going to come down to it. Uh, I don't even know if he has mines upgraded. Uh, yeah, pushing in, going to be able to get, it looks like a couple units. There's still that battle cruiser up top, keep in mind, uh, and doesn't really have anything to defend against that. And Oh, man, massive battle happening here. Uh, battle cruiser getting attacked by those Goliaths. Looks like it's going to be taken out. And this is it. This is going to come down the line. Whoever comes out of this attack is going to end up winning. Uh, and it looks like it looks like mine has managed to push this attack back. He's oh, is that battle cruiser going to go down? Oh, it goes down. Oh, battle cruiser down. Oh. But tanks uh, defending. I say screw this location. Go for that 12 o'clock now. 
uh, but pushing in on the production for whatever reason, uh, and I think that might be that, that might be the critical error right here. Is instead of uh, made a push for the main instead of going for the twelve o'clock, uh, looks like you got some vultures in the upper left hand expansion, but it just doesn't have any mines anymore. Uh, so I think and now a second attack. So I take it back. Uh, might be one more push, and this is going to be the critical push, actually. Is it, And it looks like uh, not in the meantime. It spread his tanks out, so I don't think this is going to be as effective. Mine's being placed, though, around uh, around the area, and let's manage to take out those two tanks, and this is going to be it. If mine can really uh, breach these tanks, then he'll be able to take the match, uh, maybe. I don't even know at this point. I don't know if he can produce enough vultures in the meantime uh, to end this, but this is going to come down to just an absolute last-minute battle here. Uh, just absolutely epic. I love this match. Yeah, uh, it looks like uh, a, those troops in at six o'clock. They're just sitting there. They, he needs to move those troops out now. There's hardly well. There's still a few tanks left there, but a lot of those forces have been drawn away. He needs to start using those to pressure Nada from another angle to keep Nada from reinforcing that twelve o'clock position. And I think if he can do that, he can easily take that twelve and and kick Nada out of that expansion. Looks like, yeah, he's starting to think about that 6 o'clock location now. Those vultures starting to fall back. Uh, so now it's going to come down to pincer movements, and this is absolutely intense. I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, pushing up, he's going to take out some supply, but I'm not sure that's going to make a difference, honestly. We can see Nada is just... You can see he's frustrated as well. I think both players are just kind of frustrated at this point. Mine really wants to go 3-0 against, against Nada. Nada is just frustrated that mine hasn't given up yet because he has the economic advantage so both players are just clawing and fighting to just stay in this game and neither player is willing to give up at this point but i mean you can see that mine he, again using the scvs as a wall here rushing up to with his vulture bikes trying to get in close enough to lay down spider mines Oh, going to try to push up. Yeah, get those vultures in so they can do as much damage as possible. Uh, managing to clear that tank field, it looks like. But again, and now dropping uh, backside with those glides. Going to be able to take out that battle cruiser again. Uh, and, and again, it's just those six lonely tanks at that 12 o'clock, which are going to uh, be all the difference here. Uh, and as well as those four lonely tanks and a couple more tanks being produced. But really, that is it. That is it for Nada. Uh, and, and it's just vultures here in the meantime for mine. As if he's coming off in defense for Nada in the meantime. Going to push down. Dropships going all over those tanks to the 12 o'clock. Uh, oh my goodness, this is huge. SCV's coming off in defense. It looks like they're going to be able to clear that fight off. Uh, oh man. Uh, so Nada defends. Nada defends. And I think that might be it for mine because I just don't think he has anything more he can throw at Nada here. Yeah. You can tell that mine has nothing. I mean, he's, I don't know where he's getting the gas. He must ha be buying it off the black market or something because he's yeah. still making vulture, or Goliaths and siege tanks and which is insane considering all of his guys are mined out. He's, I, mean, I, I just don't know what's going to happen here. Both players are just on their last set of legs. All it would take is just one little shove to make one of them just type out GG. This is just an intensely close end game here. I, I really have no idea how this is going to go. This is seriously like one of those brute uh, uh, grudge matches between two uh, top-level boxers, and this is like, what, the 24th round where they can barely stand anymore, but they're just trying to stand up and trying to uh, not give an inch and, and just, uh, yeah, just setting the battle lines and just pummeling into each other uh, with their full bodies. It's absolutely incredible. And now it looks like one last hurrah with what's left of the gas, with what's left of the tank. And I've been saying that what the past three times, the last hurrah. It just hasn't turned out to be uh, true, but now mine pushing in. Looks like on the main, once again, going to clear up some tanks here. Looks like they're staggered out well enough. It looks like there's still five more tanks uh, on the defense here, and we'll see if there's any SCVs in the, uh, one SCV in the area uh, to push back, and we'll see if uh, mine, oh. yeah, mine uh, ooh, loses two tanks with one shot there. Uh, only has Goliaths left, so he's going to have to pull back and just... Uh, and then hope to take And now pushing in from the 6 o'clock location, but the first shot was taken off by mine there. Managed to take out two more tanks, but there's still, I think, uh, four tanks at the location. Supply being attacked right there. But even then, I don't know that there's enough. Uh, I don't know that Nada has enough minerals to fill that supply, really. SCV's coming off the line to attack those Goliaths uh, in the middle. So it's going to be an SCV on Goliath fight. Those poor Goliaths getting surrounded, uh, trying to pull back. Uh, as best they can, and uh, actually doing their their weight and damage here, uh, pushing them all the way back across the turret line. Yeah, again, this is just so close. I don't know where where Mind is getting all this money, but he's still just sh slugging it out, like you said. Like cue the Rocky theme music going on here, because this is just insane. How they're just still fighting. It's like Rocky versus the Russian. You can see he's just trying to do drop ship drops. So he dropping the glides, picking him back up, dropping him, picking him back up. He still wants to take out that twelve o'clock, which is not his only source of income at the moment. And we can see Glides just got surrounded by some SUVs there and taken out. He couldn't escape. And unfortunately, he goes down to the mighty fusion cutters. Yeah. 
Wow, this is just incredible. More tanks setting up, and it looks like Mind now uh, thinking tr- a little bit defensively, trying to get his own line created. He's still got those three drop chips. Oh, my GGs. GGs. <clears throat> Finally, oh. GGs. Just could not oh. break Nada. Unbelievable. Completely ran out of resources. How did he Nada look, win that? And he was, look, he's sweating. He has to drink water. He's so thirsty. He must both have been sweating a lot. Physically exhausting oh. match right there. My hands are sweaty. Sheesh, hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, another dual commentary with Say Reaver and uh, Diggity. Really, you can't ask for a better match than that. That was incredible. Hope you guys enjoyed it.